Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Samuel Morris, pastor of Fountain of Living Waters Church in Queens, New York. You're watching The Oasis, our television outreach program. Praise the Lord. Now, we all know what an oasis is. An oasis is a paradise in the middle of the desert. Amen. What are the two outstanding features of the oasis? The trees and the water. The trees to shade you from the blazing hot sun that was beating down and drying the life out of you and good, refreshing, life-giving water. Amen. Glory to God. When you got born again and came into Jesus, you, you came out of the desert and you came into the oasis. But you know, too many Christians uh, come in and get the shade from the tree. Yes, they're, they're going to heaven when they die. Amen. But they never partake of the life-giving waters. They don't get the vibrancy of the Christian life that's supposed to be lived today in the earth. Just like um, a, a traveler in the desert who's hungry, who's thirsty, looks for the oasis, and it's a sign of hope for him, or her, him or her as the case may be. Amen. We as Christians, our life is supposed to be so refreshing and it's supposed to be so vibrant that the people who are still in sin, amen, and if that's you still in sin, we're going to give you the answer to that before the program is over, so stick with us. Amen. Your life as a Christian is supposed to be so vibrant and inviting to the people still in the desert of sin that they want to come in and make Jesus the Lord of their life. Amen. As we go into the word of God, as we study, we are going to learn how to walk in the fullness of everything God has for us. We're going to drink the water. You know, when I was in school, we had a little saying about good, better, best, never let it rest till your good is better and your better best. The Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy that God wants us to have days of heaven right here on the earth. So when you get born again, uh, you come under the trees, you get in the oasis, you drink the water, things are supposed to get good and they get I know this is bad English, but they get gooder and gooder and gooder and better and better and better. Then when we leave this life and go to the next life, amen, then we get the best. Amen. I was watching a program the other day, a nature program, and I was watching the gigantic whales down to the little tiny krill, the little shrimp, the crab, starfish, all the different colored fish. And it came to me with such an impact that the God who created all of this lives inside of me. How can any situation, how can any problem in life defeat me when I have the creator of everything living inside of me? Amen. Let's go to the word of God. Now, when the teaching is over, don't go away because I'm going to be right back. We're going to talk a little bit more. Amen. As the program is playing, you're going to see contact information. Amen. Uh, you can order these broadcasts um, in any format you like. Um, again, use the contact information. Get in contact with us. Amen. Let's go into the word of God. God bless. And, and, and let me let you in on another little secret, something that, that the revelation, the light just shown to me um, not too long ago. This invitation to the come um, boldly to the throne of grace is not to come and visit for a while and then go away. We are invited to come to the throne of grace and make our residence there. Turn with me, if you will, to John, the 15th chapter. John 15 and 3. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide, live in, pitch your tent. You know where it says, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's not going in and coming out. To dwell, to abide. What is another word for abide? Your abode. What is your abode? Your home. Now, let's think about what home is for a second, and that will help this make more sense to you. Home, you know, they say um, there was an old song that says anywhere I hang my hat is home. Well, I don't agree with that. Amen. Home is the place where you can relax. All right. You go out to work. You do whatever. Even when you go on vacation. Amen. Home, no matter how comfortable that hotel bed, bed is, unless you just got a bad place where you don't like living. I like my house. I like my home. Amen. Glory to God. So no matter where I go or what I do, they say, be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. Home is the place where you have all of your supplies. 
okay? Home is the place, amen, glory to God, where your stock of food is, amen. Home is the place where all of your clothes are. Amen. Glory to God. Home is the place where all your important papers are, your marriage license. Amen. And, and you know, maybe you, if you have some very, very important papers, you might have a safe deposit box at the bank. But for most people, um, your, your house is where you have your important papers. Amen. You, you know, we're told not to carry our social security card with us. So home is the place you have that. Amen. Home is the place of security. That's why as bad as it is maybe to get held up, mugged, or robbed in the street, it feel you feel more violated when you know a stranger has robbed your house, a stranger has been in your home. He's violated your private space. Amen. When you're not feeling well. You know, I had an instance now, I hope my eye doctor ain't watching this right now. Amen. But you know, you go to the eye doctor and they put, they do the tests and they dilate your eyes. Amen. And when you come outside, everything looks so bright. Well, I had did that the other day and I didn't expect them to dilate my eyes. So it was totally unexpected. I had to drive home. So you put those glasses on. I got some special dog glasses because I've been through this before that I keep in the car just for times like this. So I put the dark glasses on and I'm de dealing with the glare and I feel uncomfortable. But as soon as I pull into the house, you ever notice it's a little graphic, but it's going to help you understand the effect of home. You ever be on the bus, you be in your car, you be on a train and you have to go to the bathroom and you're holding it and you're holding it. You may pass by a McDonald's, and particularly if you're a lady, you don't want to go in there. You want to go home. Amen. And you holding it, and you holding it, and you holding it. And you ever notice that, now you could have been holding it for an hour. The closer you get to home, the worse you got to go. You notice that you're coming down the block, you're getting closer to your house, the worse you got to go. And when you finally see the house, you really got to go and you're getting the keys out and the keys dropping, you fumbling, fumbling. Why? Because you're right there and your body knows this is the place of release. This is where I can relax. You, you're not feeling good at work. Uh, you maybe you leave work or you leave school early and you come home. Amen. Just something about coming in the house, you start feeling a little better and you're going, you lay across your own bed, you feel better. Home is the place of comfort. Hopefully you have a home like I have where I'm surrounded by loved ones. Amen. There's no bickering and arguing in my house. It is a place of refuge. It's a place of peace. Amen. Glory to God. My wife and I have been married um, 22 years, uh, going on 22 years now. Amen. And on my 10 fingers and 10 toes, I can count the arguments that we've had. Amen. In those 20 years time. Amen. Some of you can't go a month without arguing with your spouse 20 times, but in the course of 22 years, we haven't had 20, um, arguments. Amen. And we have never, um, spent spent the night away from home. And I, you know, because I'm, she's going to mama, I'm going somewhere else because I'm mad. I don't sleep, no sleeping on the couch. Amen. Glory to God. Now we've been separated because she had a baby. Amen. I've been in the hospital. She's been in the hospital. So I won't say we've never slept apart, but those were things that were beyond our control. What I mean is nobody is angry and take their puller and take their blanket and go sleep on the couch, go sleep somewhere else, go, go by my Mama, go by sister, go by brother, amen, for a couple of days. Amen, glory to God. Home, a place of peace. This is my abode. This is where I dwell. Amen. So when it says he that dwells in the secret place of the most high, you're not coming in and going out. You're staying there. You abide. You make your abode. You live under the shadow of the almighty. Amen. So when he says the same thing here, abide, live in me. Don't go in and out of me. Live in me and I will live in you. Amen. Glory to God. Jump down to verse seven. 
if you abide, if you, Jesus is speaking to all of us, if you abide, if you live, if you stay vitally connected to me and my words abide, live in you. You don't only um, listen to the word of God when it's convenient to you, for you. Amen. You don't only do the word of God. Amen. When, um, when it says things that are going your way. But now, now think about it now. For us to abide, all of those things I described, amen, the word of God wants to have that same place in us. It wants to feel comfortable in us. It wants to feel relaxed. He remember, not it. He remember um, uh, maybe a broadcast or so ago, last broadcast, we said um, uh, back in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verse 12, when it was talking about God and the word, it used heed to refer and I ask you, which one is he referring to, the word or to God? And I said both because in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Amen. The word is as much, amen, a, a function of the Godhead as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are. Amen. The word is a person. Amen. Glory to God. There is as, the word is as much God as the Father, Son, or Holy Spirit, because the word is the Son. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. So the word, Jesus, the by the Holy Spirit, wants, to, wants our heart to be the same place of abode as our house is for us, like I described in the natural. So he wants to feel comfortable in there. He doesn't want any bickering in there. He doesn't want any strife in there. He wants to feel at home. He wants to feel comfortable in there. Amen. Glory to God. You know, the word of God wants you to obey him when he speaks. I'll give you an example. Um, somebody's preaching. And I get happy uh, because they say, give, and it'll be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Yay, 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 yay. By the stripes of Jesus, you're healed. You don't have to put up with that sickness. Yeah, hey, hey, hey. And when that word of God in me says, husbands, love your wife the way Christ loved the church. Ooh. Ah, see, that's a word sometimes if, if my wife has made me hot, might be a little difficult to do because I don't feel. But he didn't ask me how I feel. He asked me to do something because he's abiding in me. He's living in me. And part of that feeling comfortable is when he asks me to do something, I know I'm not going to frustrate him by disobeying him. See, so that means I have to um, do the things when the word speaks up in me that my flesh finds um, displeasurable or unpleasurable as I do the things um, that um, make me happy and jump for joy. Amen. But the point I want to get to that I'm belaboring here is that Jesus, the word, if you are born again, he abides in us. He lives in us. He dwells in us. We are his. Um, I'm old song I, they used to sing when I'm a little boy. I'm his and he is mine, a precious friend indeed. Um, whenever I'm in need, oh, how I love that man from Galilee. I believe that's how it goes. Amen. I'm his and he is mine. Not just when I've done everything that I was supposed to do. Amen. Let's go back to Hebrews 4 now. Not just when I've done everything I'm supposed to do. When the word speaks up in me and says, that's not the way you're supposed to treat your wife. Because you're supposed to love her like I love the church and I don't treat you like that. Even when I don't listen to that voice, even when I quench it, even when I go and say what I shouldn't say, after I cool down and after I apologize to my wife, I still come right back to the throne of grace. Amen. Glory to God. I am still in the throne of grace. The whole point is that if Christ is abiding in us and we're abiding in him, we are supposed to be living at the throne of grace. So when he says, let us therefore come boldly, that's really supposed to be a one-time invitation accepted. We come boldly to the throne of grace and we never leave. See, what we do 
is we came to the throne of grace to get saved and then we leave. We don't stay there. We don't make our abode there. Amen. <clears throat> um, situation in church. You know, a lot of times we get to church and we pray, Lord, um, an old song, Lord, send power just now. Lord, send power. Lord, send the power. Now, you don't have to sing that song because he sent the power. The power is here. Um, it'd be more accurate to sing manifest yourself in our presence because the power is already here. He hasn't left. And if you go into church and you have the Holy Spirit, the power is there because you're supposed to bring him with you. Amen. Glory to God. But now we pray these songs and we want God to move. And then when God starts moving, we want to limit him because at a certain time we ready to go. We're tarrying with this young lady to receive the Holy Spirit. They're praying with this woman um, for her to be baptized. And people are rolling their eyes. They're looking at the clock. They're looking at the back. You can tell as a minister, you can tell when people get itchy, when they're tired of sitting there listening to you, when when, when they ready to go. Amen. Now, it would be bad enough if I was preaching. It would be even worse if the pastor was preaching. But the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God has graced us, has privileged us by coming in our midst. Amen. And we're ready to go home. People looking at their watch, they're ready to go. And, you know, listen, you know, um, a closed hospital used to be here in Queens that I used to attend, Mary Immaculate Hospital. And any of you who had used that hospital, you can attest for that. If you had an appointment for Mary Immaculate Hospital to go to the clinic, you don't plan nothing else that day. Amen. Because I don't care whether you get a morning appointment or you get an afternoon appointment. It is an all day affair. I ha would have an appointment at 12 o'clock. I would get there, register at, one at 12 o'clock. My appointment is for one o'clock. The nurse would take me in to take my vitals at four o'clock and the doctor would see me for five minutes at 530. I've gone to that hospital at 12 o'clock in the afternoon and stayed there till 630 in the evening. Amen. But we'll put up with that. We'll deal with that. Amen. You want to go um, to the airport. You want to go somewhere. We went to St. Martin. Amen. And, and coming back, we had to go through customs and you had to stand on that line and stand on that line and stand on that line. Amen. Um, a little while ago, you know, for me, this is going to be a couple of little, uh, last week. Amen. We took my grandkids to great adventures. Amen. And got on one of those rides, the Green Lantern, I think it was. Amen. And got on there and stood on line an hour for a minute and a half ride. Foot was hurting, was tired. Amen. But I, and I could have got off the line. Nobody made me get on the line. Amen. But I stood with it. I dealt with it. Amen. But we come to church. And we won't put God on a time clock. We want him to move. Oh, yeah. I want to feel the spirit moving. Amen. But just move by 115. So by, you know, we could do offer and do what we got to do, get announcements. And, you know, I could stand in the back and talk a while and go. And, you know, another thing that gets me, amen, is these same people that's in a rush to get out of service. They don't go straight home a lot of times. They sit in the back and talk for two hours, and you know, and like they had some place to go. They just tired. See, they are not you to being in the throne of God. They're not used to being in the presence of God. Because if you were at the throne of God, in the presence of God, amen, the Bible says in his presence is the fullness of joy and at his right hand pleasures forevermore. Amen. Glory to God. Yes, we have things to do. Now, look, I mean, if you are a nurse or something, a police officer, work for transit, um, you know, one of those jobs that you have to work on Sunday, amen, and you got, you you know, you come to church before you go to work, and you got to go to work, I understand that. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about people who are retired and don't have any place to go, don't have any... Uh, uh, I won't say they don't have any place to go, but where do you have to go that's more important than being in church if you are retired and you don't have to go to work right now? To do what? Go home and watch TV? Mm? Amen. You know, um, one of the issues... Now, now, think about the convoluted logic here. One of the issues is people... Um, who are on certain medications have to eat at certain times. 
Okay, so you're gonna rush out of the presence of the healer while he is in the midst working. Who knows, maybe in his working, he'll touch you and you'll be healed. But you're not thinking like that. You're only thinking it's two o'clock and I have to take my medicine and I have to eat now. So I got to leave the presence of the healer to go get some medicine and eat because that's what the doctor said. But now the one who created your body is here and he can fix whatever's wrong with you, but you're going to hurry up out of his presence to go and do what the doctor told you you had to do. You see how convoluted our logic is, our thinking is? We're not thinking, okay, well, you know, um, the doctor did say I'm supposed to eat now and I'm gonna take this medication. Hey, but God is moving. I, I can sense the spirit of God. I see God over, all over that person. God, you can heal me, you're here, heal. No, but that's not how we're thinking. Why? Because for too many of us, God's presence is something that we come in when we go to church and we leave. We come in and we leave. But this invitation here, my friend, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace is an invitation to move in. Amen. Just like the Holy Spirit, amen, when you got filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit moved into you, amen. God moved off of Mount Sinai and he moved into you and I when we got filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, this, my friend, is an invitation to you to make your abode. In the New Testament, this is the secret place of the Most High. This is abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. This is a higher um, a upgrade because in the Old Testament, they could not come and sit um, come to the throne of grace because Jesus' blood hadn't been shed yet. The best they could hope for was to abide under his shadow. Amen. And that was a type of when they were coming out of Egypt. He was the pillar of fire um, by night and the cloud by day he covered. Amen. So that it, it, it was in the metaphoric sense. They, they could do it, amen, by as best they could in their dispensation to keep his laws. And they had to do that. They had to keep his laws. And that was one of the enticements of keeping the law of Moses, of walking in it, because that was the way that you stayed under God's umbrella of protection. But thank God we don't have to go through all of that now. Amen. Jesus abolished all that handwriting that was against us. And you have to go back many broadcasts if you're interested. Um, use the contact information that appears, and we'll get this information to you, where... Um, the law didn't even apply to us. Unless you were born Jewish, the law has nothing to do. With it. That had nothing to do with us. We couldn't even abide under his shadow the way they did because the law was only to the Jews. And if you became a Jewish proselyte, you had to convert to Judaism. But for the most part, all of that was just to the Jews. But now he's thrown it open, amen, to a higher level. And it's open not only to the Jews, but to everybody. Come boldly not just under my shadow, but come sit by me, come to the throne. What does Ephesians tell us? Ephesians 2, let me read this. Turn with me, if you will, to Ephesians, amen, the second chapter. Ephesians 2 and 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, sound familiar? Come boldly to the throne of grace, obtain mercy. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great, or because of his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has, he loved us when we were dead in sins, but now that we've come to him, has quickened us, made us alive together with Christ. All right, who's this alive together with Christ? He raised Christ up, so it's him and Christ, and we're invited to the party. It's us, us too. He has quickened us together, made us alive together with him, with God, with Christ, 
for by grace ye are saved, and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We are made to sit in the heavenly places right there at his side, enthroned with Christ. Not after we die, not in the great by and by, right now. Do you see any future tense in that? No. Hath. Hath past tense, and hath raised us up together. You go back and read in Ephesians 1, it says that when he was raising Jesus from the dead, he was raising us right along with him. Amen. And when Jesus was seated at his right hand, spiritually, we are seated with him at the right hand of the Father. We are in Christ, and Christ is in us. Amen. Let's look at 1 Corinthians, the first chapter and the ninth verse. 1 Corinthians 1 and 9 says, God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship, unto the partnership, unto the communion of his son, Jesus Christ. God is faithful. Faithful to what? He called you to the party. He's going to let you in the party. Amen. Those of you who are, might be old and remember Club 54 and all that stuff, you would get there and it was up to the bouncer whether he would let you in or not. You could have tickets and it was up to the bouncer whether he let you in or not. You could have been invited to the party and it's up to the bouncer whether he would let you in or not. But my friend, God who called us to the party, to to fellowship with Jesus, amen, to partnership with him, amen, glory to God, um, the word fellowship means partnership, means communion, all the same word, amen, he is faithful, what, he is faithful now that he has called you, that he's not going to turn you away, what did Jesus say, Jesus said, whoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast him out, so I encourage you, you've come to the throne of grace, Stay there. Don't, don't, don't come in and go out. Stay there. Amen. Make your abode there. Make your uh, dwelling place here in the secret place at the throne of God. Amen. Listen, got to go. This is Pastor Samuel Morris. Amen. And the Oasis. We'll catch you next time. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hope you enjoyed the teaching today. Uh, if you like a copy of today's program, just use the um, contact information that's appeared on your screen. Get in contact with us. Amen. Uh, get in contact with us also if you would like to join us, uh, be a part of a ministry, be a part of this great teaching. Amen. Give us a call and we'll give you the pertinent information about where, when, how, why, and all that good stuff. Amen. If you are not born again, let me invite you to come out of the desert of sin. Amen. Because you're going to die out there. Amen. Glory to God. But Jesus came so that you can have life. If you're tired, if you're sick, sick and tired of living the way you've been living, and uh, getting beat up by the devil, it's easy. Uh, let me change that. It's not easy. Jesus did the hard part. Uh, he left the easy part for us. All you have to do is accept him. Something as simple as saying, Lord Jesus, take my life and do something with it. Something as simple as saying, Lord, I know um, that I'm a sinner and I need help. I can't save myself. I ask you to forgive me. Wash me in your blood. Come into my life and be my Lord. It's as easy as that, my friend. And listen, if that's the decision you've made today, you took the first step on a journey of a thousand miles. You need to be in a good church home. Wherever you are in the United States, you give us a call and we will be able to direct you to a good church in your area. Until next time, this is Pastor Samuel Morris and the Oasis. God bless you.